my master, you're my savior. You are everything. You are everything. So you are Alpha and Omega. You're my master. You're my everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go the higher. Let's go the higher. Welcome, friends and family, on this wonderful Sunday, both here in person and in our virtual sanctuary. It's so good to see you here worshiping with us today. If this is your first or second time joining us here at our worship service, wave so we can acknowledge you. And if this is your first or second time joining us in our virtual space, be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. We also want to know where you guys are watching from, so be sure to let us know that in the comment section as well. As always, be sure to like, comment, and don't forget to share this broadcast with your friends and family. That way they can keep up with our weekly content and worship with us every Sunday. Let's go ahead and prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into worship. 
Good morning, good morning, Good Shepherd Baptist Church. How are y'all doing this morning? In the building and online, let's pl- praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Today is the day that the Lord has made, hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. How many of us have come to rejoice and be glad in it? Will you rejoice and be glad in it? Hallelujah, do you serve a God that is deserving of you rejoicing and be glad? being glad in the day that he's made on today hallelujah help us sing this song if you could just stand up on your feet we're gonna sing a little song we're gonna open up this floor we're gonna bring in the presence of the lord hallelujah
on us now. We need your glory on us now. In this place, release your glory.
and release a sound unto the Lord. Let them know that you're looking for them. Hallelujah. Let them know that you're looking for them. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah. 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 Oh. Can we say that right quick? Say, release your glory. Release your spirit. Release your power. something for you is let out a shout where you are if you believe that the Lord hallelujah is a miracle worker if he's a way maker hallelujah if he if you believe that he doesn't hide himself from you hallelujah hallelujah lift up a sound right where you are Amen, 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 amen. The songwriter said it best. It's just something about the name of Jesus. It'll put clapping in your hands. It'll put a little stomping in your feet. It's just something about the name of Jesus. With every head bowed, with every eye closed, let us pray. All wise and eternal God, our Father, the giver of every good and every perfect gift. With bowed heads and with humble hearts, with attitudes of gratitude, realizing, oh God, that once again, you've looked beyond all of our faults and you supplied each and every one of our needs. Realizing, oh God, that once again, we find ourselves being blessed to be accountable amongst the living just one more time. Realizing, oh God, that we've been blessed to see the breaking of a brand new day. Realizing, oh God, that we've been blessed to have the activity of these, our feeble limbs. Oh God, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, our souls say thank you. Realizing, oh God, that we can't repay you for all that you've done for us. But God, we can tell you thank you. God, we thank you this morning just for being so good and so kind to us. For we realize, oh God, that you brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. God, you brought us when we was unable to bring our own selves. God, you brought us across some high mountains. God, you brought us across some low valleys. God, you have brought us across some troubled waters. You never left us alone and neither have you driven us away. And for this, God, we just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you just for being God all by yourself. For God, we realize this morning that you sit high, but yet and still you look low. We realize that you can't destroy, but yet and still you will defend. God, we want to tell you, thank you this morning just for being God in our lives. Thank you, Father. For that angel that camped out by our bedside last night. Kept that hearse we are rolling right on past our house. Kept that fire in clinging and clinging right on past our house. Kept that thief in the night tiptoeing right on past our house. All night and all day, Lord, your angels watched over your children. And for this, God, we want to tell you thank you. God, we don't want to beg of you this morning. Because we got so much to be thankful for. But God, you've been good to us.
to us. You've been better to us than we've been to our own selves. And we just want to tell you, thank you this morning just for being a God that you are. Thank you for a good shepherd this morning. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting out on our way. God, we just want to tell you, thank you this morning just for being God in our lives. For we realize we can't make this journey without you by our side. So God, thank you this morning. We ask you to step inside of Good Shepherd this morning. Let your Holy Spirit reign from wall to wall and from corner to corner. Bless the man that gonna stand in John's shoe this morning. Let him down in your storehouse of knowledge. Bring him up as a well-filled vessel. Oh God, break up our stony heart this morning. Give us some receptive heart this morning. Let your word fall on some good soil this morning. Let us go out better than the way that we came in. Now, God, some of your children may be lying on that bed of affliction this morning. Be that unseen doctor in that sick room. Just let the hem of your garment touch that sin sick soul. We ask your Father to just go along with us and just stand by us. Because we realize, oh God, that one of these old days, Master, we don't know when and we don't know where. But we've got to come down to the end of this old tedious journey. We're going to sing our last song and we're going to pray our last prayer. We ask you just to meet your children somewhere down by the chilly walls of Jordan. Grace it with a peaceful home in your kingdom and a tongue that will never see praise in your name. Your servant's prayer, your servant's petition. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
Praise him, church. Praise him, church. Praise him. If he's your all in all, praise him. Praise him, church. Praise him. How many of you know this morning that prayer still works? That prayer still works. God's just waiting to hear from you because prayer still works. Prayer. And while we're praying, let's pray that he would allow his spirit to fall down upon us on this morning. That when we can worship him, we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Because God is worthy. God is worthy. I will praise the Lord at all time. At all time. Not just sometime, but all time. How many of you came to praise him this morning? How many of you came to praise him this morning? Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise him, church. Praise him. Praise him. For he's worthy to be praised. God for his presence in this house. Sometimes it's good to just take a moment. Have you ever been in a place where you just looked up into the sky and you could see Jesus? Have you ever went in the bedroom and looked at your child and just saw Jesus? Even moments like that will sometimes stir up your hearts and make you want to shout. Sometimes you do shout because you realize that it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. God took dust and made something out of it. Amen. Sometimes it's just good to reflect back on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us that our souls may cry out, hallelujah, for he's worthy to be praised. And that's what we need to do this morning. We need to just think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us and realize that we didn't make it this far on our own, but it was Jesus. It was Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Let us go to God in prayer as we meditate and think about the goodness of God and all he's done for us and, and know that, amen, even though we haven't made it to tomorrow, God has already prepared tomorrow for us. Amen. Praise his holy name. Father, as we come in the name of Jesus, thinking about, Lord Jesus, just how far you brought us. Thinking about, Lord Jesus, Father, who you are. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Brother said earlier, that's all we can do is just say thank you. But Lord Jesus, we were sinking deep in sin. We were far from the peaceful shore. But the master of the sea, he heard our despairing cry. From the waters he lifted us. Oh, how safe are we. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And we know that as being sheep, we wander away. But God will leave the 99. And he'll go get the one. I'm so glad that he's still going and getting the one. I'm still glad that he's looking beyond our faults and seeing our very needs. I'm still glad, amen, because God is in love with us. And he loves us with an everlasting love. When we don't love him, he still loves us. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. I feel good about it. I feel good about it. And I'm so thankful, Lord Jesus, that your grace and mercy is forever with your children. I'm so glad, Lord Jesus, that you look down 
upon this church called Good Shepherd. And Lord Jesus, you made this church and still making this church, this family, this pastor, the deacons, the deaconettes, the ministers, their wives, the congregation, grandchildren, our children's children. You're still making us. You're still molding us. You're still looking beyond our faults. You're still supplying our every need. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray, as well as myself and all of us, that we might realize that God has needs too. He needs his children to be the church. He needs his children to grow up and follow him. That we might be equipped to go out and see that there's others who wants to be a part of Good Shepherd. Oh Lord, help us to renew our minds, be transformed and conformed through the likeness of your dear son. That we might not think so much about our needs, but the needs of others. Oh Lord, we love you today and we praise your name. Bless us now, Lord, as we go further in this service. Lord Jesus, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. God be the glory. Amen. Please rise to your feet, all those who can, as we partake of the reading of God's word. Coming from NIV version. Joshua chapter 11, verses 21 through 23, the NIV version. When you have it, just acknowledge by saying amen. The scripture says, at that time, Joshua went and destroyed Anakites from the hill country. From Hebron, Deber, and Anam. From all the hill country of Judah and from all the hill country of Israel, Joshua totally destroyed them and their town. No Anakites were left in Israelite territory. Only in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod did any survive. So Joshua took the entire land just as the Lord had directed Moses and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the land had rest from war. I have just read to you Joshua chapter 11 verses 21 through 23. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy and mighty word. What's going on, Good Shepherd? These are your announcements for this week. To all June, July, and August birth month members, this message is for you. Please join us on Monday, June 5th at 6 p.m. as we start the planning process for our birth month celebration. My GSBC family and friends, tomorrow we'll begin the start of our back to school drive. We are asking for any donations to be brought to the Family Life Center. Those donations can include pens, paper, backpacks, tissue, colored pencils, and anything else you want to bring. You can check out the website for a full list. The drive, once again, does begin tomorrow, June 5th, and it will last through July 16th. So come out and participate. Calling all campers, fishermen, and fishing pole watchers. Join GSBC Youth and Adult Men for an overnight camping trip this upcoming weekend, June 9th through June 10th. The men of GSBC will be working with the youth on outdoor survival skills as well as teach life lessons and model appropriate male interactions and friendships. My GSBC family and friends, don't forget to join us next Sunday for our graduation Sunday worship experience. 
Hey, GSBC family and friends, it's Reverend John Kay, and I want to cordially invite you, you, and you to VBS 2023. We are building faith in an effort to continue to reconnect with purpose. We are utilizing Nehemiah chapter 2, and it's fun for the whole family. I want you to bring a friend, bring your kids, bring your niece, your nephew, that annoying neighbor next door, and come out on June the 12th through the 16th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here at GSBC in the Family Life Center. Join us as we move through the Bible. Now, for everybody 5 through 16, we have incentive-laden gift cards. Listen to me. Bring your Bible. You want to bring your Bible. There are gift cards on the way. Bring your Bibles. And everybody, 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 there's going to be something for you. Join us for fun, for family, for fellowship, and for building of faith June the 12th through the 16th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here at GSBC for this year's Vacation Bible School. Calling all father and son ballers, hoopers, and sharpshooters. That means me. The Father's Day basketball game will take place on Saturday, June 17th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. in the GSBC Gymnasium. There will be a youth basketball game, ages 8 to 15, followed by the father-son basketball game for ages 16 through 29, versus ages 30 and up. Sign up in the Family Life Center or online. The deadline to sign up is Wednesday, June 14th. See you on the court on June 17th at 9.30. Here are a few save the date reminders. The General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia Incorporated, the State Directors Conference, will be held right here at Good Shepherd Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. This will take place on August 10th through August 12th, and you can join this exciting conference and enjoy one of the nationally certified courses, the Young Adult Seminar, dynamic instructors and speakers, as well as inspirational music. The online conference registration is open right now on the General Missionary Baptist Convention website at www.gmbcofgeorgia.org. This is an online registration only event, so be sure to register today. Good morning. I am Roberta Jordan Hatcher, and I am happy to present to you the Good Shepherd Man of Distinction for today. His name is Deacon George Paul Hatcher. Deacon Hatcher is a native of Louisville, Georgia, and he attended the public schools of Jefferson County, Georgia. He was president of the High School Student Council for two years and vice president of his senior class. Following graduation, he served in the United States Army for six years, including a tour in the Vietnam War. He is a member of the Disabled American Vets Chapter 10 in Augusta. He earned an associate degree in accounting from Augusta Technical College and worked in retail and credit for over 46 years before retiring in 2010. He will be married to yours truly for 52 years on the 26th of this month. He is the proud father of Rolanda Octavia and Hubert Douglas and the father-in-law to Jeff Gallup and Grace Hatcher. He is also the loving grandfather to Gabriel Hatcher and godfather to Oscar Demetrio Brown and Willie Anthony Hunt. As a member of Good Shepherd for 49 years, Deacon Hatcher has left many footprints with his leadership and innovative actions. He was president of the senior choir for many years and devoted much time to taking care of the senior ladies. They called him their rooster, and he called them his hens. He served for many years as a trustee and was chairman of the Building and Grounds Committee. He served on the Building Committee for both the current sanctuary and the Family Life Center. He was ordained as a deacon at Good Shepherd at the age of 26 and continued his dual roles of deacon and trustee for several years. He has continued in the capacity of deacon for ward number four to the present. He is often known for his skills in raising and lining hymns 
as well as teaching hymn raising classes in Georgia and South Carolina. As a Sunday school teacher, he taught the junior boys and girls class and often served as a chaperone for youth activities at the church. Deacon Hatcher has a natural affinity to young people and they are attracted to his wit and humor. They easily relate to him and some respectfully call him homie. Deacon Hatcher served as superintendent for church school for 24 years and under his administration, the Sunday church school reached the goal of 500 students in one day. The teen class, Ruth and Naomi women's class, the married couples class, and the Joshua Long men's class were initiated under his administration. For many years, Deacon Hatcher worked with the kitchen ministry, where he eagerly displayed his culinary skills. Finally, one of his most enjoyable tasks was working with the Jennings Tutorial Ministry, where he often listened to the young people and gave them encouragement to stay in school and do their best to succeed. One can often find Deacon Hatcher offering words of comfort and encouragement, not only to young people, but to Good Shepherd members of all ages. These descriptions and other accomplishments make Deacon George Paul Hatcher the Good Shepherd Man of Distinction for today. Thank you. Let us all say amen again. Amen. Congratulations for Deacon Hatcher being spotlighted on today. Let us please keep in mind all of the announcements pertaining to the church for uh, this coming week as well as for uh, those that were highlighted uh, for next month as well. On Saturday, June 10th, Saturday, June 10th at the 4 p.m. hour, we are to be the guests at the Olive Grove Baptist Church for the installation service of the Reverend Ken Allen. That's Friday, excuse me, Saturday, June 10th at 4 p.m. for the installation service of the Reverend Ken Allen at the Olive Grove Baptist Church. If you were born in the month of June, if you are in the sanctuary in person, would you please stand? And if you're online, would you please just put in the chat box, uh, amen. We want to say happy birthday to all of those wonderful people born in that great month of June, amen. Happy birthday, June, amen. Amen, amen. We want to thank all of our couples. We had over 75 couples who registered for the marriage workshop that was held this past uh, Friday evening and Saturday. And we want to thank uh, our married couples leaders, Brother George and Sister Deborah Williams, who led us uh, in that workshop, had a great time, learned a whole lot of things. And we want to say congratulations again and thank you. Next Sunday, we will not have youth church. This is for all of our youth ages, 11 to 18. We will not have youth church because we'll be observing, uh, honoring our graduates, high school and college graduates on next Sunday during the 945 worship hour. We're asking that we would all please, ma'am, please, sir, be in attendance as we honor those who have graduated. Let us keep in prayer. Uh, Sister Linda Lumpkin Cooper, family upon the passing of her mother who was funeralized on yesterday in South Carolina, as well as the family of Sister Rod uh, Rodina Brown, uh, who was celebra celebration of life 
was held on yesterday as well. Uh, brother Otis Washington and the passing of his brother and Sister Valerie Robinson upon the passing of her mother. Let us keep all of those persons uh, in our prayers. It is now giving time here at the Good Shepherd Baptist Church. And again, there are several ways in which we give. Uh, you may mail your contributions in to the Good Shepherd Baptist Church. Post Office Box 141, Augusta, Georgia, 30903. You may also drop your contributions off here at the church. Monday through Thursdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And on Fridays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. You may go to the church's app or the church's website, text to give or giblify.com. Uh, you also may uh, place your offerings in the receptacles as you enter into the sanctuary as well as as you exit the sanctuary. Again, we thank you for what you give for the ministries of our church. Let us pray. God, you're such a good God. That you bless us even when we're not deserving of your blessings. We thank you for placing within our hands the financial resources to take care of the temporal needs that we have here on this earth. And then, God, we thank you for giving us the spirit and giving us an opportunity to give back for the work of the kingdom. Bless us now in our giving. For it is in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. On Wednesday, uh, June 14th, between the hours of 11.30 and 1 p.m. at the Laney Museum, they will be having the Augusta Black Caddies, the uh, uh, Augusta Black Caddies and this is to honor those uh, caddies, the African-American caddies that was the, at the Augusta National. Uh, the luncheon is $15, and it, you need to reserve your spot. Uh, you need to RSVP by June the 12th. Uh, please, ma'am, this is going to be a, a, a panel of those who are yet living as it relates to the black caddies. Uh, at the Augusta National that got it all started. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, uh, be governed by that announcement. We see so much that is going on in our community, in our state, nation, and world uh, that it can only be a thing where those of us who know the words of prayer must pray. This morning, for those who were within the sanctuary, we had a little skit that came from our prayer ministry to let us know the importance of prayer. Because many times, I don't think we really realize the awesome weapon that we have in prayer, the power that we have in prayer. And if the church doesn't pray, who else going to pray? Uh, the scriptures tells us over in Chronicles, if my people, and it was not talking about the people on the street, it was not talking about those individuals who were not saved. It's he's saying, if those of you who know me, and I know you, if those of you who are in me, if you would pray, if you would confess your sins and Humble yourselves before me. God said, I'll do a mighty work in the land. We see needless killings that is taking place, not in New York, not in Chicago, not in Los Angeles, not in Atlanta, but right here in the Garden City. What would it be like? If those of us who knew the words of prayer 
would just pray. We will not ever be able to legislate gun control. But I think we can do some gun prayer control. I, 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 I think we can ask God to change some hearts because legislation doesn't change hearts. Only God can do that. I'm going to ask the musicians to uh, play, pray for me. And there may be some needs that you have this morning. And I ask those that are worshiping with us online, if whatever those needs are that you have, put it in, put it in the chat box. Those who are within the sanctuary, I'm just going to ask that you would just call it out, whatever that need is. I'm going to ask this morning, I, I, I know program-wise it doesn't call for prayer, but you can't, pro, you can't program prayer. I'm going to ask that we would pray for our city, pray for our state, our nation, and our world. Pray for the person who's seated next to you, in front of you, and behind you. There may be some need that you have this morning yourself. Pray for yourself as well. Will you call out whatever that need is that you have if you're in person worshiping this morning? Whatever it is.
for me. Now, Father, now, God, we come right now because we need some help. And, God, we need the help that only you can provide. God, we're living in a culture right now. We're living in a society right now. We're living in a world right now, God, that has gotten away from you. And God, we need some change and we, we need some repentance in America today. We need some repentance in Augusta today. God, we need some repentance in the world today. God, change our minds and change the direction in which we are traveling. And God, we know that only you can do it. God, we see crime on the increase. We see needless shootings and killings every day all around us. God, draw us to you today. Because, God, we know that if you don't do it, it just can't be done. God, we're asking that you would change the hearts of our political leaders and let them know that we are your people. Let them know, God, that they are to be sensitive to the needs of your people. There are many right now, God, that have some kind of sickness that they are dealing with in this sanctuary and even at home right now, God, and the diagnosis doesn't look good, but you haven't given the last word yet. Because God, we know that you can bring healing where there seems to be no healing. We know because your track record is good with us. We know because a woman reached out one day and all she did was touch the hem of your garment and her issue of blood dried up. God, your track record is good with us because we know one day you just gave a blind man his sight. God, we know you to be a healer. We thank you for the healing that has already taken place. And God, we thank you for the healing that is yet to take place. But then, God, even if you don't heal us the way we think that we should be healed, we still know that you are able. So we come thanking you right now just because you are an able God. God, so many are experiencing bereavement. Some are dealing with pain from the loss of that loved one. God, many are wondering right now, what am I going to do? Now that my mother, now that my father, now that my husband, my wife, my child, my loved one, my friend, what, what am I going to do? God, turn us to you and let us know that we can still make it. If we place our trust in you, we, we ask right now, God, that you will bind up some broken hearts and clear up some minds that are confused. And God, wipe some tears from some eyes on this day. God, help us with our hurt. We know you can do it. Because you've done it in the past. 
Now, God, the person that's seated next to me is the person that's in front of me or behind me. Meet them right now at their point of need. Whatever that need may be, that person that is watching over the television or on the, their cell phone or on their iPad, on their computer, God, meet them right now at their point of need. Now, God, we must confess that we hadn't always done right. We've got to confess, Lord, that we have not always done that which was pleasing in your sight. God, we must confess that we've sinned and come short of your glory, but your word tells us that if we do confess that you are such a good God, you're a just God, a righteous God, a loving God, a merciful God, that you'll forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Move God only as you can move. And God, we're not going to wait until we see the victory. God, we're not going to wait until the answer is in our hands. That God, we're not going to wait until you pay the mortgage or pay the rent. God, we're not going to wait until you take care of all of our temporal need. But we're going to give you the praise right now. We're going to give you the glory right now because we know that your will will be done. And we just pray now that we'll be in your will. And we know that whatever is in your will is best for us. So we say thank you now. Lead, guide, and direct us. Keep us forever in your will and in your way. And God will give your name the glory, the honor, and all of the praise. For it is in your son's name we ask these things. Amen. Amen and amen. When you've done all you can and seem like it's never enough and what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone all alone tell me what when you've given your all seem like you can't make it through well you just stand when there's nothing left to do you just stand watch the lord see you through yes after you've done all that you can you just stand Tell me how oh, the guilt of your past. Woo. Tell me how do you deal with the shame? Oh, how can you 
you smile while your heart has been broken and filled with pain, filled with pain. Tell me what do you give when you give in your own land? Seem like you cannot make it through. Child, you just stand when there's nothing left on earth to do. You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand and be sure. Listen, be not in time by the bondage again you just stand and do listen y'all I said God has a purpose yes God has a plan tell me oh, when you've done all that you can and seem like you cannot make it through child you just stand you just stand you stand don't you dare give up to the storm to the rain to the hurt not to the pain oh, don't you bow that you can. Somebody in here been praying for a long time. After you've done all you can. After you've been through the hurt. How many in here know you've been through the pain? After you've gone through the fire. can you just stand Ooh. how many know you have to stand oh you stand praise his holy name after you've done everything that you can you prayed all night long you cried all night long you Stand. Hallelujah. He's worthy. After you've done all you can.
after you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. After you prayed all night long. After you done. Oh, after you've done all that you can. After you've gone through the hell. Oh, after you've gone through the pain. Oh, you prayed and you cried. Oh, you can oh. one more time after you've done all that you can after you've done all you can after you've done all you can you just stand oh Can we say amen? After you've done all that you can. After we've done all that we can. Just stand. And see what the Lord can and will do. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. I wish you would just think about that. <laughs> After you've done all that you can.
I know he is. He can fix it, y'all. I know he can. Say yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Somebody act like they don't know what I'm doing and what I'm talking about and who I'm talking about. I said, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He'll make a way, he'll make a way, yes he will. Now back in, in my hometown, for some folk that just can't say nothing, they can't move, they would say, if I couldn't say a word, if I couldn't say a word. I couldn't say a word. I just wait, wait, wait my all right God he's all right I keep on burning I can't hold my peace. I keep on burning. I can't hold hold my peace. If you're talking about Jesus, he's a friend of mine. If you're talking about Jesus, he's a friend, shown a friend of mine.
wouldn't have a religion. I couldn't feel sometimes. Wouldn't have. Sometimes, Lord, if you don't help me, I can't stand the storm. If you don't help me, Lord, I, I can't stand. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. The devil thought he had me. Oh, I got him. Anybody got him? Oh, I'm so glad. But I felt the change I didn't see nobody Oh, I felt the change I felt the change Oh, I felt the change what you come to do. I don't know whether or not you brought some extra wood with you to put on the fire. But I came to lift him up. I came to praise his holy name. Sometimes people will look at you strange and crazy like, but you just don't know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know what the Lord has done for that person next to you. Amen. Amen.
We thank God for his spirit. And I didn't have to come to church to get happy. Because I was already happy when I got here. But it's something about when you're in church. It, it, it's something about the fire. That's why in most municipalities that uh, they don't want you following behind fire engines. Something about a fire that if you don't put it out, it'll spray you. There may be someone on your road right now. They may be trying to put your fire out. And you need to ask them to move somewhere else. Or the fire may jump over them to the next. You know, fire just has a well spread. And everybody don't react the same way when the fire is moving on them, but in Mississippi, they used to say every nine days, your hand ought to clap. Every nine days, your feet ought to pat. Every nine days, there ought to be an amen somewhere. And even if you don't say it audibly, you need to look like you got an amen in you. So we thank God just for his spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. I'm, tr I'm trying to get to the sermon. Yeah, but I ain't, I ain't got there yet. So... So if, if y'all need to leave, go ahead on out. I'll, I'll get there shortly. of Joshua chapter 11 and I want you all to read chapter 11 and chapter 13 out of chapter 11 the new international version verse 23 so Joshua captured the whole land just as the Lord had directed Moses Joshua gave the land to Israel as their very own. He divided it up and gave each tribe its share. Then the land had peace and rest. And then in chapter 13 and verse 1, out of the New International Version, Joshua 13 and verse 1, it said, Joshua was now very old. Lord said, you are very old, and there are still very large areas of land that have not yet been taken over. For a few moments, I want to just talk about fulfilling God's purpose for a victorious life. Fulfilling God's purpose for a victorious life. This, this book of Joshua is a fascinating book. It relates the story of an ancient Hebrew leader and the people whom God had called him to lead into the promised land. This book of Joshua is a personal story. It's a story of promise and of the great expectation that God 
not only had for Joshua, but the great expectation that God has for each of us. This book helps us to see what God is immediately able to do for us to realize his promises in us. Uh, Joshua described how Israel conquered Canaan and they did not do it by military might or force, but they did it by faith. It, it, it shares spiritual lessons of how to conquer the Christian life, not in our own ingenuity, not with our own finances, not with our own educational abilities, but how we can conquer it by faith. Israel had seen God's miracles at work in the crossing of the Jordan and in the conquering of Jericho. They had also seen God work when they were disobedient and they were defeated at Ai and uh, deceived by the Gideonites. And in it all, they were marching on in conquest of the land. The work was not yet finished. God's will as revealed to Joshua was to go over the Jordan and to inherit the land that he had sworn to give to their fathers. After Jericho and other experiences, Joshua 11 describes for us what happened because the Bible said Joshua took all the land and made war for a long time. The land was taken according to the word of God. And right there in verse 23, it states that the land rests from war. Joshua was going on in the conquest of the land, and that's exactly what God wants us to do. Once we have Jesus Christ in our lives, and once we are committed to his victory in Christian living, he wants us to grow on in Christ Jesus. Good Shepherd, we are not to ever cease maturing and growing in our relationship with God. Be joyful. Grow in maturity. Encourage each other. Live in harmony and peace. Then the love of God will be with you. Greet each other with Christian love according to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. As Christians, we must continue to grow in the Lord each and every day of our life. We, we, we must continue to understand what God wants us to do. We must understand the basic thing that the Lord requires of us before we can perform the more complex thing for the Lord. We are to live our lives not in sorrow. We are to live our lives not in misery. We are to live our lives not in hell, but to live our lives in joy. We ought to be able to tell somebody on this day, this joy that I have. The world did not give it to me, nor can the world take it away. And how many of you know this morning that the world will try to take away your joy? The world will try to knock you out for the three count, but you ought to tell the world, the Lord gave me this joy. We are to encourage one another. We are to live in harmony. We are to live in peace. And we are to greet each other according to the scripture with Christian love. But before we can become witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and be taken seriously by the world that's watching us, we must be able to come together as family and spread the love that Christ has for us as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. If we can't do that, then we're not, we won't be strong enough to show the love and the joy necessary to witness to a lost world. We, we, we're not always going to agree on everything, but we must Disagree in love and not hate. We, we must continue to treat each other as family and not as opposition. As we treat each other with respect and love, we will be witnessing to an outside world. 
Our joy, our love, our peace should be our way of life and not something that we do out of fear or just when someone else agrees with us. We, we ought to continue to build our faith and make God's ways our ways of life. If we live in the Lord, then we will live a life worthy of witnessing for the Lord. If we're going to mature in the Lord, we must be feeding on the word of the Lord. Yeah, the Bible lets me know over in 1 Peter, just as a baby will not grow without milk, as a child of God, we will not grow without feeding on his word. Uh, Peter says to us this morning, like newborn babes long for pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. If you and I are not feeding on God's word, good shepherd, then there will be no growth. It's not just about coming to church, not just about coming to Sunday school and watching it virtually. You got to grow because you do know you can come to church. You can come to Sunday school and still not feed on the word of God. Oh, let, let, let's see if I can make that live because as a child, there were some things that I just didn't like to eat. But my grandmother would put it on the plate and she would sit the plate in front of me. And she would tell me, you're going to eat it before you get up. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, what I, what I would do, and I think I'm not the only one who's in here, I would put it in my mouth. And the moment she wasn't looking, I would take it and put it in a napkin and put it in my pocket. The food was in front of me. I even put the food in my mouth, but I didn't eat it. What, what you're saying, boy, I can come to church and the food can be placed before me and I still don't have to eat. I, 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 I can see the move of God working and still not grow. If we are going to mature in the Lord, we must be practicing this thing called righteousness. There will be no growth if we only talk about the things of the Lord, but we don't put the things of the Lord in practice. As we see in Hebrews chapter 12 of chapter 5, the Bible said, but solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Practice brings the ability of discerning good and evil, and that's the mark of spiritual maturity. When I looked at this text in, in, here in, before us this morning in Joshua chapter 11 and Joshua chapter 13, one of the things that jumped out at me this morning was God's rest. Because brothers and sisters, we are living in a restless age. Even though we are living in an age of unprecedented prosperity. We are living in an age where we have more now than we've ever had before. And with this prosperity that we have, we are still not satisfied. We're looking for change just for the sake of change. We are built for God. We each have a hole in us that only God can fill. And when God fills the emptiness within us, our souls are at rest. But when we are trying to fill that emptiness within ourselves with someone or something else, we have that restless nature. Our souls might feel disquiet. Our souls might feel uneasy. We might feel like something is off. The restlessness we feel is often God speaking to us. It's God's wake-up call, letting us know that there's something that needs for us to pay attention to. Perhaps we took a misstep. Perhaps we made a poor choice. Maybe we knocked God out of the sin of our lives and are trying to replace God with someone else or something else. Perhaps our prayer life have been neglected. 
the restlessness we feel is God inviting us and drawing us back to let God be the one who put our souls at rest. And God's rest is described right here in Joshua chapter 11 and verse 23. The Bible said, and the land rests from war. The Bible speaks of rest when it describes Israel experience rest in the conflict and in the conquest of Canaan. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 and verse 9 refers to rest in the life of a child of God. For those who are born again, rest is an awe-inspiring reality. Uh, it is God's will that we know this rest, and it is God's will that we experience this rest. Now, I want y'all to note this morning that this passage is not speaking about physical rest. This passage this morning is speaking about spiritual rest, rest from turmoil, rest from stress, rest from strain of the Christian life, rest. From worry, rest. From the anxiety of trials and trouble, rest. From the frustration and discouragement, we need some spiritual rest. And what is this spiritual rest? What, what's the meaning of spiritual rest? And why is finding rest for our souls important? Spiritual rest is easy to overlook until we face the burnout of mental, emotional, and physical exhaustion. Spiritual rest is easy to overlook when worry and anxiety and anger and frustration and bitterness and unforgiveness and stress burdens our soul. Spiritual rest is different from self-care. No, no. Spiritual rest empowers us to experience peace and perseverance when we are facing the challenges of life. Spiritual rest is often the first form of rest that we forget or that we cut out, yet we know spiritually and scripturally it's the most important. Nothing should trump our personal relationship with God. Oh, I like, I like what David said in Psalms 27 and around verse 4, David said, one thing have I asked of the Lord. And David said, y'all know what I'm going to do. I'm going to seek after that. I'm going to seek after day and night. He said that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The one thing that we should desire more than anything else is to be with the Lord. Think about that for a moment. When you get really busy in your life, what is the first thing you do? What is the first thing to go? When you really get busy in your life, one of the first things to go is spending time with God. One of the first things to go is your prayer time. It's your time in the Word. It's easy to get so busy with life that we neglect to do what truly is most important. One pastor put it this way. He said, if the devil cannot make you bad, he'll make you busy. The enemy will try to tear you away from God by filling your life with things that are less important than just being with God. And when you get busy, you need to remember not to neglect your time with the Lord. Don't push God on the side. Don't push aside the spiritual rest that you need. The Bible said Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord had spoken to Moses and Joshua inheritance to Israel according to the tribal allotment and the land had rest from war now that doesn't mean that all of the Canaan that all of Canaan had been defeated it doesn't mean that 
all of Canaan had been occupied by the people of Israel. There were still Canaanites in the land. But Joshua had broken the will of the people who occupied the land, having put the fear of God in them. There was no part of Canaan where the reputation of the Israelites and the name of God had not been heard. But now, the individual tribes of Israel were going to be held responsible to perform the necessary cleanup operation in their respected portion of the promised land. They would have to finish what Joshua had begun. God had brought them to the land. God had provided them with a miraculous entrance into the land and assisted them in conquering the nation. God had helped them to occupy the land. But now, good shepherd, it was their time to populate and to possess the land. The Canaanites were no longer a significant military threat, but they would remain a spiritual threat for generations to come. The Israelites would take the period of rest from battle that God was giving and turn it into a time of complacency and compromise. And I think that's where we are in America today. We have taken this time and this period of rest from the battle that God has given us and we've turned it over now to a period of complacency and compromise. We have become individuals who are sitting down and watching the, hell, watching the world go to hell in a basket rather than stand up and say, for God I live and for God I die. We become too complacent. We want to compromise with everything that comes our way. We want to just get along to be getting alone. But I stopped by to tell us this morning that God is holding us responsible. God wants somebody to stand up for his call. And rather than complete the task that God had given them, they would eventually choose to allow the Canaanites to remain in the land. Instead of the Israelites doing what God wanted them to do, they would allow the Canaanites to stay there in a marrying and then even worshiping their God. Living in the rest that God provides does not mean that we ought to put down our gods. It doesn't mean that we need to relax our God. We should not let down our defenses and become complacent in our obedience to the will of God. But not only do we need God's rest, but God issues us a challenge this morning. For God told Joshua, you're old now. You are advanced in age. But very much of the land still remained to be possessed. It had not been too long since he had seen young. He was the successor of his mentor, Moses. Joshua now bears the scars of battle. Leadership had taken its toll on him. And as much as he had endeavored to do a thorough job, Joshua's work was not yet complete. It comes as a startling moment of truth when we realize our own human limitation. Discovering that we may never accomplish all that we have planned to accomplish in our life. Joshua might have been discouraged because of his aid. Knowing that his work was not complete. But this was not the case. Joshua was a man of spiritual understanding. In this passage you can see Joshua had not led the people to take over all of the promised land just yet. There's still more conquests to be done. God tell Joshua to divide the land among the people of Israel as if it had already been done. God tell Joshua, I myself, and I like that. God said, I'm going to do it. I myself will drive them out before the Israelite. God promises to complete his end of the bargain. Provide that Israel would simply trust and obey him during the process. 
And God is commanding Israel to behave as if the battle had already been won. Because he was going to ensure uh, that the task would be complete. Yes, in other words, it's not over, but it is over. In, in other words, I got to do what God said do. In other words, good shepherd, the battle doesn't belong to me. The battle belongs to the Lord. There are times that God calls us to trust him for the final victory. We are called to follow him even when we are unable to see the end result. I, I don't know about you, but there have been times in my own life that God has been telling me to do some things, but I didn't see it with my own eyes. I didn't see how it was going to turn out. But God said, you go head on and do what I said do and leave the end results to me. Is there anybody here this morning that has ever left the end results to God and God worked it out for you? You didn't know what it was going to be like. But God said, go head on and take that first step. And you took the first step and God worked it out. God challenged Joshua, go on to possess the land. And two words need to be emphasized in the text. One word is inheritance. A word used to refer to the land as God's gift to Israel. And the second word is possess. In chapter 13 and verse 1. This was the action Israel was to take. To make the land their actual inheritance. Inheritance is what God provides. Possession is what they took. God gives but we must possess in order for it to belong to us. There's a divine plan and program for every soul on earth. There is an assignment that only a particular individual can fulfill. To every sinner, the plan of God has been perfected for them to repent and come to Jesus. To every child of God is God's plan for us to daily come to the fullness of Christ. The life of the believer is more than silver and gold. The life of the believer is more than material possession. It is seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Joshua, a man that had been faithful following God from the days of Moses. And when it was time for him to take over from where Moses left off, Joshua did that faithfully. And he did it with the help of God. He led the children of Israel to the promised land. At an old age, there are still many more lands to be conquered. And in our pursuit of the kingdom, there's still a lot of work to be done. We must remove the garment of laziness. Let us get to our father's business. And one writer said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day because nighttime is coming when no man can work no matter how much we've done in our christian life there still remains some work to be done a lot of souls still need salvation a lot of believers still need discipline our women men and children still need to be taught and trained in the way of the lord the widows and the orphan still must be reached for God. Prisoners and those in hospital still need some hope and courage that come from the word of God. There remains yet very much land 
to be possessed. God will use us not for our glory, but he'll use us for his glory. God has given us spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus, but we've got to possess it by faith. God gives grace, but you got to claim the grace. The challenge for us then is to grow into maturity. Grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's not God's will that we fail to grow spiritually or that we become defeated and miserable Christian. God challenges us this morning to grow. But finally, I've got to ask myself the question, how will I respond to the challenge? How do I grow spiritually? How do I possess this spiritual heritage in Christ Jesus? Well, there are two attitudes. I dare you to read Joshua 18. The entire congregation of the people of Israel, the Bible said they got together at Shiloh. They put up the tent of meeting. The land was under their control, but they were still seven tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua addressed the people of Israel. He says to them, how long are you going to sit around on your hand, put it off, taking possession that the Lord has already given? He told your ancestors it already belonged to you. That was an attitude of slackness to do the will of the Lord and to be slack is to be lazy, to be slack, is to be slowful, to be slack, is to be idle. Yeah, the Bible has a lot to say about slowfulness. The Bible has a lot to say about laziness. Joshua was saying, God is giving you this land, and how are you going to put it off taking over the land? Brothers and sisters, I do not want to put off doing anything that God has called me to do. Taking any step that God has called me to take. Why would I and why would you put off God and what God is calling you to do? Why would we put off experiencing all that God desires and has designed for us when we are spiritually lazy towards God? It prevents us from living the victorious life when we are spiritually lazy. It prevents us from living the abundant life. But Jesus said that I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I stopped by this morning to tell you, good shepherd, that the land already belonged to you. All you got to do is just take it. I want y'all to look at that word, take it. Take it mean to claim it. Take it. It's rightful ownership. Whatever you need already belong to you right now. All you got to do is take it by faith. God has said, I've already given it to you. But the second attitude is an attitude found in Joshua 14 concerning a man by the name of Caleb. In that passage, Caleb is a noble man, one that's described as faithful and have a fullness of spirit. 
in this passage. He's 85 years old, but even at 85, he's still daring. Even at 85, he's still physically strong and spiritually courageous. He's facing the greatest challenge of his lifetime, and he's not yet ready to sit on the sideline. He's 85 and not ready to retire. The secret of his life is found in verse 10, where he said, the Lord has kept me alive. And I don't know about you, but I can shout this morning, thank you, Jesus, I'm still alive. I've got the constant assurance of the power and the presence of God. I got the constant assurance of walking in the spirit. I've got the constant assurance of following my God. Caleb was not concerned about comparing himself with other people. He wanted what God wanted for him. There was a burning desire in his heart to get into the battle. His one great request was, give me this mountain. He was hungry. He was thirsting after righteousness. He was completely satisfied in his relationship with God. Caleb realized that it wasn't enough just to set a goal. No, it's not enough just to have a goal. It's not enough just to have a purpose. Caleb realized that once the goal was set, he'd have to fight. He have to struggle. He'll have to work in order to reach the goal. And I want you to know this morning, reaching the goal is not an easy thing. It wasn't easy for Caleb, and it won't be easy for us. Caleb, in order to claim the mountain, he ran into some giants of the land. And I stopped by this morning to tell you that there are some giants in the land today. There are giants of adversity. You will never attempt anything significant in life without some opposition. No matter what you do, you got somebody that's going to criticize you. No matter what you do, you got somebody that's going to discourage you. Somebody that will talk about you. But don't worry. Keep on pushing. Keep on going forth. And the Lord will bring you out. I know somebody that know how to defeat giant. He can defeat the giant of adversity. He can defeat the giant of failure. When you do the best in your service, trying to tell somebody about a man called Jesus, your life will be marked with defeat and failure. But God will step in and make a way. Will you believe when I tell you this morning that God has a wonderful plan for your life? God has a mountain that he wants you to claim. God has a goal in life that he wants you to reach. God got a purpose in life that he wants you to fulfill. It will not be easy, but the Lord will help you. The Lord will help you reach that goal. He will help you climb that mountain. I don't know about you, but I can shout this morning and tell somebody like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. 
when the storm of life are raging and their fear is on me I wonder what I have done to make my race so hard to run but then I say to my soul don't worry the Lord will make a way somehow is there anybody in good shepherd that know the Lord will make a way somehow I tried to do my best in service tried to live the best I can and when I tried to do the right thing evil is present on every hand I look up and wonder why good fortune just passed me by but then I say to my soul soul don't worry the Lord will make a way somehow he will make a way somehow when beneath the cross I bow he'll take away all my sorrow let him have your burdens right now and when the weight shows upon your brow there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord nobody else will but the Lord will make a way somehow how can he do it he's got a right to do it he can do it is there anybody that can testify that the Lord made a way your life and the reason he can make that way is because he's the king of kings he is the lord of lords he can do it he can do it anybody here can testify won't he do it can't he do it hadn't he already done it for you and the reason he did it is because a long time ago he went on a hill called Calvary, hung, bled, and died. Died for you and for me. Died till heaven got the news. Won't he do it? He died until the moon ran down in blood died till the sun stopped shining he did die but thanks be to God he didn't stay dead I got some good news early on Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand I wonder is there anybody in good shepherd know that he did get up did he ever get up in your life? I'm glad I can tell somebody one Wednesday evening he got up in my life. And ever since that day, I've been trying to tell somebody that I know a man. Anybody here know Jesus?
It's yours. He's already promised it. It's yours. Take possession of it. If you belong to him. He'll give it to you. But you got to be his. Don't be like the tribes that wouldn't claim what God had already given. I can give you a check, but if you never deposit the check, you never cash the check, the check doesn't do you any good. God has made a promise. And you've got to claim the promise and claim what God has already given. The door of the church is open. By letter, Christian experience, or candidate for water baptism. If you're here this morning, can you just walk out? On faith, if you're watching online, can you go to the app or to the website and fill out the application? And we'll make sure that we get in contact with you. If you're backslidden and you want to come back into the fold, will you come right now? If you move to the Augusta area and you're already saved but you're not in church where someone can give an account for your soul. Will you come this morning? This, this, this is your time right now. It's not building up, it's not about building up the membership of Good Shepherd, but we want to make sure that the kingdom of heaven is built up. Will you come on this day? This, this, this is your time. This is your time. Will you come? Amen. Amen. Will, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Don't, don't, don't wait for nobody else. Don't no, no, this, this, this is an individual thing. Will you come? Will you come? Walk with me, Lord. If you died right now, Walk are you for sure you're going to heaven? If you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, Walk you need to get that straight. Before you leave here today, walk, walk with me. Wild, wild, wild. While I am on this, stand up a man, woman, boy, or girl. Will you? Can you step out on faith right now? I want Jesus. I want Jesus to walk. With me, oh, oh, my hand, Lord, oh, my hand, yeah. oh, my hand, Lord, oh, my hand, oh, my hand. Oh, my hand. Oh, my hand. Walk with me.
We have Sister Mary who's coming this morning for rededication as she come back to the Lord and to just recommit herself, rededicate her life uh, because he's the only one who can hold us and sustain us. And we want to give her the right hand of welcome as she comes back and rededicate herself. Let's say amen in our membership commitment. We'll get all of the information from you immediately after this worship. Let's say amen one more time. Amen. I ain't no stranger now. I ain't no stranger now. Amen. Shall we all stand? And let us not forget again Wednesday evening, Bible study at 7 p.m. virtually and in person. And then Saturday at 4 p.m at the Olive Grove Baptist Church in Columbia County for the installation service of Reverend Ken Allen. And then we'll see you right back here Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. for church school and 9.45 for worship. And then join us on Fridays at 1 o'clock online for follow-up Friday, a recapping of our Bible study lesson. God, we thank you, we love you, we adore you. And God, we claim right now all of the promises that you have for our lives. God, we're going to possess the land that you have given us. Thank you right now. Thank you for your spirit as he leads us and guides us. And God, even as we prepare to leave this morning, we pray now that you don't let anything or anyone trample on our joy. God, in the name of Jesus, we stop the adversary. We stop the demons. We stop demonic spirits. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Do it, God. Do it, God. And now, unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him who is able to present us faultless before God the Father, unto him that dominion, majesty, and power, we do pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.